Hi, my name is Mudassar Khatib and I will talk about my research work today. As we all know, switches are a very important part of any power converter and reliability of the switch is very important. There are many ways to determine the reliability of any switch. Uh, power cycling is one of the ways. The setup that I'm working on is able to power cycle a given IGBT module between specified temperature limits. We choose these limits based upon the JREC standard for power cycling. We decide the failure of the IGBT module uh, by measuring the ZTH or the thermal impedance of the module. The same setup is also able to measure the ZTH or the thermal impedance of the module. We decide 20% increase in the ZTH as a criteria for failure of the module. The power cycling temperature limits are defined by the junction temperature of the IGBT module. Since a temperature sensing device wouldn't be able to measure the accurate junction temperature during transients, the setup uses VGE or the gate emitter voltage of the IGBT to sense the junction temperature during transients. Now the relationship between junction temperature and the VGE has to be known before power cycling. This relationship is linear and is given in terms of the K factor. As we see in these figures, this linear relationship remains constant for a given device current. This is the block diagram of the system. The system consists of two closed loops working together. The first one is to keep the heating power constant. The second one is the temperature cycling loop and helps switch from heating to cooling and cooling to heating whenever a temperature limit is reached. This waveform shows an example of power cycling done between the junction temperature limits of 40 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. Now this was about cycling. After a certain number of power cycles, the condition of the IGBT die attach is investigated by measuring its thermal impedance or ZTH. I'll show you how this setup is used to measure the ZTH. Now here we see the junction temperature and the gate emitter voltage. As the heating begins, we capture the first heating pulse using a data acquisition system and we use this pulse to measure or calculate the ZTH of the die attach layer of the module. This pulse shows the VGE waveform during the onset of heating. Since the equation for VGE is characterized at very low current, we, we consider VGE as a representation of junction temperature only at low currents. Hence, the VGE just before heating and the VGE just after heating is used to calculate the ZTH. The VGE just after heating has a voltage spike since the VGE falls from a higher value. In order to avoid the errors in the junction temperature sensing due to this spike, we consider the part of this VGE after the spike or noise and then extrapolate it backwards using perfitting methods. This gives us the VGE immediately after the heating pulse has stopped. Now that we have the VGE values right before the heating pulse and right after the heating pulse, this equation can be used to calculate the CTH. This is some of the results of power cycling tests done on one of the samples and we observed that the sample shows 20% change in ZTH after about 1700 power cycles. This is the hardware for power cycling and ZTH measurement. This is the module under test which is connected to the board right now. The setup is enclosed in a glass isolation during power cycling to avoid any effects from external atmosphere. This is the data acquisition box from National Instruments that is interfaced with LabVIEW on PC and power cycling waveforms can be observed on the LabVIEW screen. The LabVIEW screen shows power cycling that is being done between temperature limits of 40 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade. The LabVIEW screen also shows whether the device is heating or cooling and the number of power cycles completed. This is the indicator which shows the percentage change in the ZTH.